Um, sorry for the delay, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, my name's Nadine. I head up marketing at Redbox um, at a time where we're seeing um, the role of voice and voice data really changing and evolving, particularly in relation to customer experience CX. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague Paul, um, who's a solutions architect. Yes, yeah, so uh, Paul, I'm a solutions architect, so I've been at Redbox for five, six years now. So my primary responsibility is working with the accounting. And making sure we're sort of defining solutions that uh, will work when we deploy them. Okay. So obviously we've got um, a few people in the room that are Redbox customers already, but we thought it'd be worth just a very quick overview of who we are and what we do. So um, Redbox has actually been capturing voice or delivering call recording um, for over 30 years. And because of that, we have a huge breadth of connectivity, so we can capture voice from over 55 UC and telepathy platforms. Uh, we're based, um, our headquarters, headquarters are in Nottingham, and that's where all our dev and our 24 7 knock is based. But we have global offices, uh, and our customer base is, is all around the world. Um, we work with six of the world's top banks, 85% of the big steel brokers, as well as a significant number of police forces, both in the UK and globally. And we've got about 1,700 contact centers as well. Yeah. And uh, we, we guesstimate that we're capturing more than 2 billion calls. Um, Year, um, and by the way, if you have any questions, we're having to sort of take them at the end of the presentation if we've got time, so please ask away at the end. So really, just to sort of recap, um, we've got a few people who use Redbox, but are there other people in the audience who actually use voice recording in general? I know there's other products in the market, but who else does voice recording or uses voice recording? Say the majority of people, really. Okay. So, if we just sort of revisit what the most common and current, what we call use cases for voice recording, why are we recording? Um, you get those sort of three uh, shapes there on the left hand side. So, compliance, because luckily for the business that we're in, another compliance talk business, there's a set of regulations that say if you are doing financial transactions, you have to record. Okay, that's the law, that's legislation. Um, also, um, Workforce optimization and quality assurance. You hear it a lot, you know, you're calling into a call center and um, <laughs> we're calling into a call center and people, you hear the, your call could be recorded for quality and training purposes. Okay, we hear it all the time. Now, a challenge that I'm sure you have and find, and a lot of our customers find, is that with a call recorder or call capture, you amass a lot of recordings. So whenever you are checking for compliance, or you're checking for quality, or you're doing assessments, even if you had an army of people doing that job for you, the chances are you're only listening or analyzing a very small percentage of calls. Okay? And the big question is, are you actually listening to the calls that actually make sense or make an impact to your business? Now, you may be analyzing something over here, and really you need to be looking at calls over this area of the business. So there's a little bit of hot luck associated with that. And fortunately, today, which we're going to talk about, and with the continued uh, advancement in technology, um, you'll hear people talk about artificial intelligence, you'll hear people talk about machine learning, you may even hear people talk about deep machine learning, which if you have questions about any of those, we're happy to take those at the end or outside. But with the introduction of these technologies, and also the increase in processing power and cloud capabilities, the fact that you can just literally process so much more data much more quickly, we're getting into these realms now on the right hand side where you can today analyze all your voice, okay, in real time. Not just a selection in the hope that you might just hit something that's interesting. We're offering the chance to analyze everything and produce real time business driven results. So we're seeing customers and businesses talk about making business decisions based on real-time data that is captured. Okay? And this is what we're doing today with voice for you. Okay. So why is voice important? Um, we firmly believe, we recognize about, um, uh, what's the expression I'm looking for? Omni, Omnichannel. Omnichannel call centers. You hear it all the time. You can connect on web chat, IM, Twitter, Facebook, email, and still voice, okay? And as we talk through this conversation, we will cover the omni-channel as well, but for us, voice remains very important. It's our sentiment, okay? 
we still firmly believe that the more complex transactions that you have to have with your customers does and will involve a voice conversation. Okay. Now, the voice itself has a number of sort of elements attached to it. Okay. The fact that we can offer this processing power across everything in real time opens up the opportunity to look at voice in a different way. Okay. We've got a set of elements here attached to voice. So the sort of stuff we can offer you know, uh, today is sentiment analysis. You know, is uh, and Dean chipping at any time. I know we've got some good ones here. But sarcasm is a great example of sentiment. If someone said, now that was a really great example. <coughs> Being sarcastic or they're being genuine. Uh, intent is the ability to sort of uh, monitor conversations where you can uh, start predicting where that call is going to lead to based on the knowledge that you've built up on other analysis. So, is this call heading in a direction where it's going to end in a complaint or is it going to end in someone wanting new products or is it going to end somewhere else? So, intent. Uh, root cause analysis. Do you want to give the one you, 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 you were talking the other about the portal issue the customer had? So here we're really talking about, you know, we, we have mentioned on the channel uh, already in the presentation. Um, what we're what we're seeing a lot of customers finding is that actually customers escalate by voice quite often. So you you might um, start seeing again a significant volume of calls, perhaps say with an issue with an online portal. Um, so what um, speech analytics and AI and ML can get us to a point to do is very quickly flag those root causes um, and enable organisations to address them quickly. So fix that issue in the portal, so bring that key volume down. Um, that's not a new phenomenon, but it's just the speed at which it can be done. And perhaps in, you know, in you know, re um, less recent times, what might have been done was given that the call centre agents content or direction in order to deal with those calls, which is you know still very much the use case. But it's just accelerating that root cause analysis and root cause fix. And similar with the actions as well, isn't it, in terms of you're getting, as I mentioned that term before, sort of data-driven business decisions. So by analysing at this level, you can start saying, we need to take some action within the business. It's quite clear, because we analyse everything and everything the customers are saying, perhaps we need to start producing some new content on our website that may explain some or address some questions that are commonly coming up week in, week out in the call centre or in our business. Okay. But what's the reality today? Because it all sounds great, this stuff, and the stuff is out there doing it, but what's reality? Reality is, uh, according to our um, various uh, companies that do these studies, we know that 90% of the businesses out there, they buy into this idea. There's no argument. Uh, people understand if only we could analyze more stuff more often and more real time, we would feel as if our business would be a lot more empowered to make better decisions. Okay, we also know uh, AI, artificial intelligence, is not going to go away either. I think it's fair to say, wherever you turn these days, people just name dropping this term at every opportunity. We all talk about AI all the time, now. but it's, it's a reality and it is here to stay. However, in the middle there, we also understand that all that data, all that voice, all the stuff that you know can help you make these decisions is kind of locked away. It's very difficult to get to. Silo, it's old. It might even be on tapes. If you know, you've got some very old systems that are stored away and it's very difficult to do something with it. Okay? So the sort of challenges, which I've just given you one there now, is if we look at those circles here, there's, there's great number of percentages. So 51% of conversations captured are inaccessible. Okay? So in the marketplace today, there are, uh, of course, other vendors <coughs> doing stuff for voice. But in our opinion, they make it very difficult for you to gain access to that voice on the basis of giving you the empowerment to do what you want to do with it. Okay? And the other one there, less than 50% less than of enterprise-wide conversations are being captured. So, of, of course, there's a, there's a cost implication, there's a reason why people don't record everything, because, you know, there's pound signs. But that's changing, as we speak, as well, in terms of uh, what we call voice capture, in the sense that you don't have to buy an entire big voice recording system with all the bells and all the whistles and all the, all the options. 
we can offer something which we call voice capture, which is just capturing voice and just capturing data. And I'll tell you what we can do with that in a second. Okay. And then last one there, again, 84% consider an open API approach to feed voice data imperative. Okay. So again, this is about data sovereignty is a phrase we'd like to use. This is about recognizing that it's your voice recordings, it's your data, and we want to make it as easy as possible for you to do whatever you want to do with it. Okay. So how do we address this? Okay. So Redbox, we have what we call a partner ecosystem. Okay. We believe we've got one of the richest partner ecosystems out there. So as a business, which we've been doing for 30 years, as the business, <coughs> we are specialists in talking to telephony platforms. And there's a lot out there. Okay? I'm sure you would recognize most of those names there. And our expertise extends beyond just telephony. I appreciate it's not relevant for the here and now, but we do a lot of work with the police forces, uh, the ambulance and the fire people. We record radio communications as well. So we're specialists in capturing voice, full stop. Okay. And what we've done, we've built uh, what we call a layer, a wrap around our voice capture. So basically, again, we make it easy for that voice, for you to get access to it and the data to do what you want with it. But it really comes into play now where I'm talking to you as if you've got to do something with it. You're welcome to do whatever you want with the voice. But by doing this approach, we can bring on top brands like the, the top row there and plug those people in. And they can start doing something with the voice and layering that into their systems. Okay. So um, Nadine will expand on this, but very briefly, Salesforce, Microsoft, Tether, and Frack Exploit, they are all specialists, which you're going to learn about in a minute, in their field. But the one thing they don't have is voice. They've got CRM systems, they can tell you how many times a customer called in, they can tell you what their balance is, they can tell you if there's been a complaint because something's been ticked in the CRM, but they didn't have the voice. And that is what has created a very a sort of unique relationship in the market for us and these companies because we provide that voice into their systems. And then suddenly you've got that circle which then complete in terms of analysis of what the customers are saying and doing, what they intend on. And then, uh, I think this is my last one, and I hand over to Nadine. So this, we call this the sort of the API wheel, okay? It might not interest everyone in this room, but it gives you an idea of what you can achieve with our um, API systems. So just going around to the top right-hand sort of call handling, um, your ability to control calls yourself, you know, calls, calls. Um, yes, people do want to delete calls, GDPR, we all know about that now, people want to be forgotten. Uh, we have the ability to uh, allow people to plug in to monitor the status of the systems. We have the ability to export the voice and data, which is what I've already mentioned, which is a primary sort of feature. Uh, top left there, um, we have customers today who actually have not actually used the Redbox interface at all. Um, it's, a, it's a largely overused term, I still use it, which is that single pane of glass. People don't want to say, right, I'm in my CRM, then I need to go to my voice recorder screen, then I need to go to my other screen. They just want that one screen to do everything and not have to think about this. Make the user's experience as easy as possible. Um, so that's the provision inside. Search and replay, uh, as I mentioned, searching for calls, retrieving the data. And then this is a big one for us as well. It's a big play we're seeing this. So I talked about legacy systems and data that you can't do anything with it because it's maybe locked away somewhere or it's on another voice recording system and so on. But we provide capabilities to import legacy systems voice into our system. Okay? And our end, with just a, it, it's a true, true, very true story, very short. But a customer, he was slightly embarrassed to ask me about this. He said, Paul, I've got to ask you, is if we were to go with Redbox, you would be the third voice recording platform that we've had over so many years. And he said the other two um, platforms or businesses went bust, they went out of business. Okay, And now I'm stuck with years upon years upon years of voice and data 
that I really can't do anything with unless I fire up this old PC to connect to the walls and so on. He says, so I've got to ask you the question, so if I invest in your solution, what would happen if Redbox went under? And I'm suddenly left with five years worth of Redbox data. And this is where the export capabilities put this particular customer to rest. I said, reiterating again about data sovereignty, that voice and that data is our customers to do what they want with it. If they want to export it, as soon as we record it, export it out of Redbox and put it in the Azure cloud, you can do it. If you want to put it in the Amazon S3 storage, you can do it. If you want to export it and put it into another ecosystem, you can do it. Okay. So I had over to Nadine, who's going to expand on some of those ecosystem partners that we sort of mentioned and how they, they play. Yeah, so I'm just going to talk you through a couple of the integration partners that we work with and some of the functionality that, that they offer and also um, some of the use cases um, that we're seeing in play. So the first one is Salesforce. So we, we um, actually have an application on the Salesforce App Exchange store that's been there since last year. Um, it's all based on the core proposition that we've already been through with you and that we can take voice from multiple different telephony platforms and give you sovereignty over it. And utilising voice data control replication, we can push both the voice, the capture audio, the associated metadata, and the transcripts into the CRM system. Now, you're probably aware, I mean, how many of you in the room actually use CRM? Yeah, most of you, I think. What we're certainly seeing and what um, we're seeing a lot of the conversation being around is that that's the CRM platform is increasingly becoming a centralised platform for all sorts of data inputs for organisations, um, which is why both us and Salesforce are very keen to look at how we get voice data into that CRM record. So what happens is the, the metadata is essentially used to map, to automatically map those transcripts <coughs> into the CRM record at the account, lead and contact level. You'll then be able to search those transcripts within the CRM database itself. So actually, the transcripts have their own um, uh, element at the top in your UI, which is configurable, so you can place it wherever you want. But that allows you to search for keywords within the transcripts, either, again, drill down to the levels that I've identified there, or you can search every single transcript in your CRM database if that's something that you wanted to do. You can also um, click to replay calls from directly within the CRM record itself. So if you if you view an interesting transcript and actually you want to go back and listen to what how that actually panned out, you can do that one click play. Authenticates back to the recorder. And you can also use the metadata within the native Salesforce reporting. So you can pull that into your dashboards, whether that's the number of calls and you know, all that all that level of information you can just pull into your existing reporting framework. There's three sort of key use case areas that we're seeing. Um, the, the, probably the most dominant one is actually the one on the right hand side, the um, single customer view. So a lot of organisations are now looking to understand true voice of the customer, true, true voice of the customer. You know, that single golden customer record, which holds all of the insight, all of the conversations, all of the history of that customer relationship. Very useful on an ongoing management basis, but also we often see, you know, when people, salespeople, particularly the business, quite often lose a lot of insight around the customer previous conversations that have been taking place with that customer. So that's, a, that's a, the most significant use case we have uh, within the CRM database. Um, governance and compliance, you know, that, that's very much, as Paul said, a use case that still exists for, for call recording, very much a core use case. Here we're seeing, because you've got access to these um, transcripts, um, you know, suddenly all of this data is available to you, to use of you at scale without having to listen to individual calls to find out information, we're seeing people search for things like use of scripted disclaimers um, at product launch time, um, are salespeople correctly positioning the product, how are they addressing um, competitive positioning, all that kind of search functionality based on keywords. Um, we can also look for things like uh, PII um, and also consent, so very important for GDPR, um, you can actually track um, find the, the consent that's been given. And then finally, trends. So that again comes back to some of the keywords and behaviour patterns, whether that's going back to the embedded Salesforce reporting or use of specific um, recurring themes within conversations. 
<coughs> Next, I'm going to talk to you about Tether. Has anybody heard of Tether in the room? No? Yeah? So this is um, a very up-and-coming partner, just getting a lot of traction based on, based on their capabilities. It's a really, really interesting solution. It's what they call um, a CX management platform. Um, but what's really, really interesting about it is um, that it's aimed at what we call the citizen data scientist. So effectively, what Tether have built means that you don't require data scientists or developers to implement this solution. So it's based on speech analytics, which you can see there. It pulls in lots of data, not just voice. You also get customer feedback management and other operational data. But the big, the big differentiator is um, this pulling in this consultancy and consultancy and advisory piece. So uh, Matt Dixon, who's the chief product officer at Heather, actually used to head up CEB, which is now part of Gartner. They did a, a huge um, customer uh, uh, survey or research piece on both customer experience and sales practices. I believe it was over 100,000 customers that they actually um, did the, the piece of research with. And they came up with um, a theory around customer effort. Um, what, what they, in a nutshell, discovered is that you can delight the customer, but actually, surprisingly, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, result in brand loyalty. But conversely, a bad customer experience or high customer effort does seem to tally with brand disloyalty. So what they what they built their platform on is customer effort scores and customer customer um, customer behaviour. I think I'll, I'll chip in and just tell you a quick story about I think 10, 15 years ago when I was an engineer, I mean, we talked about audio analytics all those years ago. And I can remember installing an audio analytics system to a, a credit card company. I can remember standing there with the engineer once we, we set the service up and it was analysing and we sort of folded our arms and said, what now? What do we do with it? And I think there was silence and the first suggestion was let's start to type in a few swear words and see if we can find any customers swearing. But the thing was, the engine was there but the wrapping and the knowledge that goes around it wasn't. No one really knew what to do with it. And as Nadine's explained here, we're 10 years on, 15 years on now, and now you've got these companies who have that knowledge built and ready to go for businesses like your own to plug in. It's not a case of, well, you've got your engine, sort your sales out, Mr. Customer, you know, think of some words that we've, we've moved on so far from that now. So this is being based, as, as Nadine said, on genuine sort of scientific data research which should build these customer experience models that have been plugged in for you. So what Tether does is provide over 100 inside categories which are basically out of the box defined categories that will automatically in real time um, um, reason over your data. So you will get an automatic um, effort score and I'm not going to try not to go into too much detail on the actual products in these sessions, but just to mention we are outside um, if anybody wants to come down and drill down on this in a bit more detail afterwards. Um, but you get um, a series of out the box dashboards, reports, over 100 inside categories, as I mentioned, which actually feed into inside libraries. So they can range from anything from call effort, so that's you know how long, how long someone's been on hold, how many transfers they've had to do, repeat contacts right through to customer sentiment, you know, measuring frustration, confusion, um, right through to an insight library around um, self-serve effort. So I, I'm getting back to my um, example that I referenced earlier, is somebody um, having to switch channels because they couldn't achieve what they wanted to do on the portal, in an app. Um, those, those kinds of, of libraries and insights out of the box. And again, here we're talking again about Tether and the Redbox relationship. So the reason Tether worked with Redbox is going back to what Paul and I said previously in this, in this um, session. It's all about secure access to high quality audio and metadata. You know, we, we often hear the saying that AI is only as good as the data that fuels it, and that is, is absolutely true for voice. If you don't have quality voice data or quality transcripts going into these engines, actually they haven't got anything of high quality to reason over, so your output, you know, 
will be affected. So that's why Tether and Redbox work so closely together. We focus on our core expertise in capturing voice. And we work with the likes of Tether to focus on their core expertise or in CX and in AI. The other point I wanted to highlight on this slide was that um, open ecosystems are pertinent across the board here. So when we talk about Tether, Tether also integrate with CRM, BI, CFI, CEM systems. So they're not trying to push your voice data into one platform and look into there either. Actually, they're also empowering you um, to unlock the, value of that, unlock the value of your voice data in the systems, tools, and applications that you choose that work for your business and based on your business outcomes. But what does that actually mean? How does that translate? So this is um, this is a case study. It's actually a tether case study. So just in the interest of transparency, this isn't one we've worked on jointly. It's a fairly new partnership at this stage. But I wanted to put this up because I think it, you know, back to what Paul was saying earlier, AI can be seen as a bit of a buzzword. And sometimes we don't, it's not always clear what the end results are going to be. So this is a specific customer that we've worked with. Um, again, the quote at the top really it really showcases the capability um, to onboard Tether without the involvement of you know in-depth scientists um, and programmers to, to build the application with you. Um, this customer had obviously tried to work with other providers previously, but actually was able to achieve it fairly quickly and easily, relatively easily and quickly with Tether. And then the things, the type of um, metrics that they've got against their success criteria. So there's the obvious ones that you, you know, any, business, any business will look for, such as you know, increase in sales performance, um, increase in conversion rates. But we've also got um, things like reduction in effort scores, improved satisfaction, and then predicted NPS scores. NPS scores aren't going anywhere either. You know, this is all about consolidating multiple data points to give you a more holistic view. Finally, I think we're doing all right for time. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 and the level integration with conversation intelligence. So, it's probably getting a bit of a familiar story to you now, but the fact that Redbox captures data from multiple telephony platforms. In this situation, Microsoft is, uh, sorry, Redbox is the preferred telephony partner to fuel conversation intelligence. Conversation intelligence is a sales AI platform. And it's part of Dynamics 365 Sales Insights. Um, what we do here is we push the voice into an Azure Blob container where Microsoft then takes it, transcribes it, and pushes it into conversation intelligence to reason over. And there's three key areas that we're looking at here. It's called cool sentiment, content, and conversational style. So here it's all about empowering sales team leaders to optimize performance of sales teams. So obviously this is a fairly new solution, but what's really, really interesting is that um, Microsoft actually used um, conversation intelligence on their own inside sales team um, as part of the launch process. So you can see here a bit, bit, bit of a demo on what the dashboard looks like. But what was really, really interesting was, so conversation intelligence reasons over things like um, sentiment, but also identify things like speaking to listening ratios to try and give some idea of how agents are performing and what best practice would be to then push that back into other agents' performance. Um, interestingly, what they found was that um, negative sentiment in customer conversations was actually flagging more consistently in higher performing sales agents, not something they were expecting. When they dug down into it, actually what transpired was that the um, higher performing agents were actually asking customers much more about their pain points. So they're actually engendering negative sentiment in the conversation to then position themselves afterwards as able to address that with the products and services that they were offering. So that was a key indicator, you know, that was a key driver in their, their better performance. The other really interesting thing they found was that um, although the Microsoft team are aligned to specific product lines, actually the customer's expectation was that if they wanted to talk about a different product, that, that agent was Microsoft. So it also highlighted the requirements for further um, upskilling on uh, products across the different 
across the range. So we'll just pause at this point and take any questions. Is there an additional customer consent required to process this type of data, or does it fall under the general Does it fall under the general ID consent process? It's a quite complex question. I think really, in terms of GDPR, I'm not a legal expert, but in terms of GDPR, you have to have GDPR. You have to have a specific consent to process, legitimate, you know, legitimate reason to process. So you would need to consider that as part of your GDPR processes. They're not specifically the voice name, which is really the lower of the scale. No, it'd be part, yeah, it'd be part of any sort of data processing policy. Kind of what are you seeing between sort of business business use case versus the this sort of technology? Well, it, I mean, the use case is uh, uh, really extensive, as you would imagine. So for B two C, we're more it's predominantly more contact centre driven at the moment. So we're seeing things like um, contract renewal and um, process improvements for you know things like hire car companies. How's that end to end process working? Um, those kinds of use cases. You need to see, probably. Um, I'm going to go to B2C. Do you have a specific case in mind? I guess the issue is we're a bit more mature in B2C and we're just starting, whereas now we're getting the B2B space. So. Okay. I think something we've not mentioned in the day, and, uh, and I can remember when we presented before, and we had people come up after the presentation, and they're, 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 their eyes are like this, and they're, they're like, it's great technology, but they think, but I can never see my company using this for It just sounds so amazing. But something we've not touched upon is really our market position around small, medium, and enterprise. And we operate in each one of those levels within the marketplace. So uh, yeah, not, not to disparage small businesses at all. What we're saying is these days, this stuff is all in the cloud. You know? It's not a case of uh, you're, you're too small so you can't put 10 servers in and, and do whatever. This is all running up in the cloud. So if you're a 10 agent uh, call center who want to give this a go and see what an analysis you can do, you can do this. You know, if you're a 1,000 agent call center, you can do this. Mm -hmm. okay? So don't, don't, don't um, look at this technology and think, oh, this is never going to float in my organization. We're just not, we're not there. We never will be. Don't think for that for one moment. I think across the board as well, the two dominant use cases are CX, but also sales performance. So even, even small organisations have, you know, got a field like desk space, sales city. And it, it's all about analysing those calls at scale again and drilling down into what's actually happening out there, what's driving better performance to help prioritise content creation, positioning. You know, you also take that insight and feed it back into product and sales and marketing as well. So, yeah, the use case that you know, there are a few key themes that we're seeing um, that are, are sort of leading the way. But yeah, the world's a bit the oyster at the moment in terms of use cases. Any other questions? I heard that we, we heard a good the question the other day and uh, I think people were asking what, what do we think is a good customer experience and people say well the thing is when someone calls into a call centre and at the end of the call they say I'm really happy and that was a really good call and I think someone said actually the best customer experience they can imagine is knowing what the customer needs before they know themselves and I thought that's a great thing so even before the customers thought that they need something the business already knows what they need They've either contacted them, or they, they messaged them, or they've done something proactive, or reacting proactive, proactive about it. You know, it's a great customer experience. And again, by mining this data, you can aspire to get to that point where you're predicting stuff that needs to be done before it actually happens. So, uh, one of the questions, uh, one of the points in the um, session this morning was that the volume of calls is actually decreasing as like chatbots and other technologies increasing. How do you see that impacting like yeah, there, there was a stat I didn't call out. We've got all these things around to say. You, know, and you say that, it just reminded me of something I didn't say. Was there was a study done, and I think still by 2022, 2023, 
they say still 70% of agents will only be voice powered still. Okay, so the, 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 the bots and all this are, are good, and they are, they are coming and they're here to stay, but that's one um, study that we, we've seen. The other one that we see quite a lot, and there's a company um, that we work with where they uh, track the chatbot stuff, and it looks really, really great stuff. You can see where someone calls in, calls in connects on a chatbot, and they're chatting to a chatbot, and then you see the person say, I want to talk to someone real. I know you're not real. Okay? And then suddenly a real person comes on the chat, not on the phone, but on the chat. And so, now how can I help you now? Then they're typing away, and then the customer says, No, I want to talk to someone now. And then you can see this flow then turns into a, a conversation, a telephone call. But all of that is tracked as well, which is trackable. Okay. I don't know if you've got an opinion on the on the, the voice. I mean, mm. I mean, the, the absolutely omni channel is, is you know the future, but voice will remain very much a key element of the of omni channel. So I think what we'll be looking at there is. Firstly, that the um, digital swap, or the channel swap or channel switch, which Paul's reference to there, is seamless. So then it's you know about passing data from the chatbots to the agents, so that they can, when they do have that voice-based conversation, you know you're empowering them to, to get to the point quicker, understand what the issues are, and resolve them a lot faster. I think we're seeing, we continue to see the escalation, as Paul said, is, is preferred by voice, and. Voice, the, the, the voice-based data or the voice data is especially salient. So, a lot of the conversations that do, are taking place by voice are actually the richest to organisations. So, I think a it will remain huge volume. You know, even as we move to, to, to omnichannel, voice will remain especially personal and salient data point for organisations. 